Hello and welcome to Bloke on the Range, and this is actually my first time out on a real range for quite a while now, as my lockdown beard may attest to. So what we're going to be doing today is doing some tests with pretty much the full range of number four rear sights, uh, because there's always been something that struck me, that the, the manual said that the battle sight on the ones with an actual elevation adjustment um, is for 300 yards, and there's even a manual that says for use up to 400 yards. And every time I've actually used one, it's fallen a bit lower than that, except on one occasion, I think. So what I'm gonna do is uh, go through my little collection, and I've got practically one of everything here. I've got um, a Mark I rear sight, so the, the milled with the click adjustment, with a big hole, one with a little hole from Savage, the Mark II two position flip, the sort of wartime emergency one, we're not going to do because we know we know exactly what that's set for because it's stamped on it. And then we've got the, uh, the sort of intermediate sights. I've got a small hole, small battle aperture Mark III sight, and they're stamped Mark II because uh, it's actually the leaf. It's the sight Mark III with leaf Mark II because the Mark II rear sight doesn't have a leaf. Uh, it's a very dissatisfying explanation. I don't really like it, but uh, that's how it is. And that's actually in the in the late war list of changes when they consolidated everything. Um, it actually states that. I, I would like to think that initially it was a screw up, but I haven't found any early enough documentation to confirm or deny that. But we'll go with the official explanation for the minute. So pressed Mark III, small battle aperture. I've got two Mark IVs stamped Mark III. They're pressed and I've got a big aperture and a small aperture and then we've got a Canadian Mark IV stamped of course C Mark III for the same reason big aperture, small aperture and I've got a number five rear sight which is lower because the front sight on a number five is lower. Um, when I go through them all I'll explain the whys and wherefores of each one. I'm not going to bore you with too much shooting um, but what we're going to do to work out what the height of the battle site actually is. It's not actually a ballistics question, it's a geometry question. Uh, we don't need to find, we don't need to have ranges and shoot real Mark 7 ammunition, which is rare as rocking horse teeth these days, um, and work out where it shoots to. What we can do, we could actually just do it with a laser point, with a, with a laser bore sighter. Um, but in fact, all we have to do is find out what, what uh, graduation on the leaf the battle site corresponds to. So downrange I have two targets at the same height next to each other and um, what I'm going to do first is shoot a five round group with the battle aperture off a rest with a number seven so a two two uh, because we do not need to expend expensive 303 in doing this so I've got an absolute pile of RWS target rifle small bore ammunition um, and then what I will do for the first one is I will set the leaf to 300 yards, which is the official story. And the first thing we'll do is go down and have a look. And I haven't got a spotting scope, so we're going to do this without spotting. And um, because it's, it aggravates some people if I look through the scope. But I grew up a shooting target rifle where we put the rifle down between shots and rebuild the position each time because you'd be down, lying down for 20 minutes, half an hour to fire 12 shots. So uh, you need to avoid fatigue. But anyway, so what I've got on here at the moment, number seven rifles um, came with a number four back sight. Number eight rifles had their own, and we don't really care what the battle aperture is on them because it's not relevant, it's not militarily relevant. So I'm starting with the one that this came, on, came with, which is a Fazakali Mark I back sight. And uh, we shall take it from there. Right, so first up, for Zachary, Mark 1. Big aperture. And this is 50 meters, and I'm taking a 6 o'clock hold just underneath the black.
So I set the rear sight to 300 and we'll see what this does. Just realised I forgot my hearing protection, but uh, standard velocity out of a out of a barrel this long really isn't loud at all. I should probably put them on for the next bit for uh, pour la bonne forme. Ooh! Whoa, that actually went way lower than I expected. Um, one, two, three, four, five with the battle aperture. One, two, three, four, five. This is not massively great shooting, actually. Um, that's kind of embarrassing. That's well, I guess that's about two inches, four mower, not the end of the world, should be doing better. Um, ooh, we might need to put some, uh, put some uh, other paper back behind there. Right, actually we'll just measure it. Uh, with the battle aperture, that was just under 58 millimeters. And with the tenth of a millimeter um, Precision in inverted commas aperture that was 53 and a half ish millimeter. So not a massive difference actually But in the group size between the two um, the the big aperture is a little bit bigger But as I've shown before you can basically do the similar same sort of group sizes. So anyway, that is so much above. Let's just roughly Good enough for government work Look at that That is ooh, our main point of impact ish Somewhere like there that's about nine centimeters of difference, which is, that would be 18, sorry, I'm not good at mental maths, I'm an engineer, uh, 18 at 100, uh, and it's about three, so that's about six mower difference, which is roughly what you'd expect the difference between 300 and 100 to be. So let's set the sight at 200 minus three clicks and see where it goes. So I set the rear sight on 200 minus three clicks, and we know it should be three clicks because in the ideal case, in the zero instructions, they were zeroed at 100 yards uh, with the sight set at 200, and the mean point of impact should have been three inches above, which is three mower, and these are more or less minute of angle clicks. Oh, well, that was much better shooting. That's more like it. Um, but as you can see, the mean point of impact is about the same. So on that one, definitely the battle sight is set at 100 yards. But is it the same for the others? So let's pop this Fazakali big aperture one off and put a Savage small battle aperture one on there. And I don't know if it's in focus and you can see, but there's a, there's a Savage Square S mark on there. This is actually quite easy. You've just got to be aware that there's a hellishly strong spring in there. There's a pin on that side which I've already knocked out uh, they're often very very tight and need persuasion and pliers and you can just tap the main pin across you, if you push down on it it will help and then let it up and in classic fashion um, reassembly is the opposite of disassembly so put it push it down line it up Oy. This is a bit trickier sometimes. Sometimes it actually helps put it vertically so you can push straight down. It is a monster spring. Yeah, and of course it's going ever so well on camera as usual. I'm being ever so slick. It's not bloke on the range unless something goes wrong. Get one. Getting it lined up can be a bit of a pest. There you go. There we go. Finally. So what this will also allow us to do, this test, is see what the consistency between the various types of sites is, how much lateral deviation there is, um, an elevation deviation. So because that one just came out at 100 straight off, what I'm going to do is exactly the same thing, but without bothering to do 300 first. And let's just set that also stiff. I've not had this on a rifle before. Okay, so the backlash, so it's 200, one. Yeah, this is gonna bottom out on me. Yeah. So 
see. Right, this one, this one bottoms out early. The uh, the other one can be wound way below two. You get miles below it. But uh, this one, this one bottoms out. So this is actually going to be about 150 or something. But uh, let's load up some more arrow and see how it goes. So the small tenth of an inch battle aperture there, it does give a similar definition to the, uh, to the, to the precision in inverted commas aperture, um, but a better field of view. But it gives a worse field of view than the two tenths of an inch battle aperture. Um, it's always a compromise. With any type of sight, it's a compromise between width and depth and light and less light. And uh, I think tenth of an inch, certainly with the sort of low light or fuzzy light we deal with here, is kind of a, a good choice all round if you only have one uh, size. I, I certainly find that, uh, that both French and American military rifle apertures tend to be teeny tiny. They seem to be sort of optimized for the Arizona desert at midday. Whereas I grew up in conditions like this, overcast. And this is actually brilliant diffuse light for shooting. Uh, but you do need a slightly larger aperture. But, um, I mean, in terms of close up, the, the, the big two tenths of an inch battle apertures are definitely the way forward. I mean, it's a ghost ring before anyone had even thought of the term ghost ring. But let's go see where they fell. Oh. Oh. Now that is interesting look at that so that's my five shots with the battle aperture and that there is five shots with it set about two clicks below 200 we need to do this one again with it set at 300 well that was an unexpected result now the first proper number four, so not a target rifle conversion I owned in the UK, had one of these savage sights, and I once shot it at 300, used the battle aperture and they fell low, so I was expecting that to fall exactly like the other one. So, let us crank this up. There's backlash in this one. So, when you've got backlash, which, uh, which means that a click in each direction, well, there's some slop in it, so it doesn't quite go, um, always approach from the same side, preferably the bottom, and you can put a bit of brake on it with your thumb. Um, yes, very, very interesting. I always like unexpected results. So, I'm not going to film all the shooting because that's just uh, expending gigabytes of data that will just bore everybody and I'll blitz through it anyway. So, um, see you back down at the target in a minute. Hmm, it's not bloke on the range unless something goes wrong. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. So that's only printed ever so slightly higher, like, not very much, um, like, not quite two mower higher. I think we are going to need to crank this up a lot, and we can calculate this roughly. Da, da, da. So that is, well, call it 8, 16, that's, uh, at 100. Right, some atrocious mental maths later, and uh, I reckon we need to come up about six clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, which actually aligns us with 400. Let's uh, see how this goes. Ah, uh, well, that's much closer, and my groups are getting better. Practicing, cheating. Right, mean point of impact there is basically aligned with that line there, call it that. That there, mean point of impact, is yeah less than a centimetre down. So that is less than one click. So there's no point in retesting that. Um, a click here or there is, is nothing. If we click up to 400, it's multiple clicks. Sorry, 450, it's going to be multiple clicks. So we can say that within, within one minute of angle, that is set for 400. Now this would actually mean that, just like the Mark II battle site I'll talk about in a moment, that the, uh, the, that the battle site setting is 400 without the bayonet or 300 with the bayonet. I think it's interesting. Um, I suspect once we've got to the end, I might test another, um, another British-made large battle site, uh, Mark I rear site, but uh, we shall see when we get there. Now if I line these two cards up, what's interesting is 
that actually the mean point of impact with the battle aperture is only slightly higher. I mean, it, 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 it was about here with the uh, the Faz site and the Savage site. It's here. That's well, a little bit more than a bit of angle, probably. Um, so the difference is actually, it's not in the battle aperture, it is in, it is in the leaf. It's in the adjustment. Because with the Faz, 300 puts us here. And with the Savage, 300 puts us here and 400 puts us here. Now that I was not expecting. I was expecting that, that, that the fine adjustment be basically the same and that the battle aperture might be different. In fact, I wasn't expecting them to be different at all. But I think that is amazing. And the line, if I line them up like that, that is close enough for government work. That's close enough for government work. Yeah, so there's, there's basically the tolerance between those two sites for windage is pretty much bang on. For elevation of the battle aperture, it's more or less bang on. But the ladder is quite different. Maybe that is why there was a lot more adjustment below 200 on the Fazakali site. Right, so back into the story of the sites. Now, these are precision pieces of engineering. They are costly and time consuming to make. And uh, if your production of sites can't keep up with your production of rifles, you can't get the rifles accuracy tested and put out in the field. So the immediate stopgap was the Mark II site, which is the famous two position flip. Um, actually, people don't give this as much credit as it deserves because it's, it's actually not a bad idea, particularly for a conscript boomstick. And what this does is it gives you a 300 meter aperture yard, yard, 300 yard aperture, uh, which is 300 with the bayonet fixed, uh, 400 without the bayonet, it just so happens that the difference in the weight of the bayonet on the end of the barrel causes about the right amount of um, vertical displacement of the shot to go between 300 and 400. And then you flip it up and you've got 600. 500 you aim two and a half feet down with the 600 yard aperture and uh, it is deemed below 300 with the bayonet fixed that, that that's close enough for government work for service size targets was the way they, uh, they phrased it. Um, anyone wanting to do better work would have to learn their hold downs. And you don't hold over. You never hold over because you end up blocking what you're trying to shoot out, shoot out with the front sight. You always set higher and hold down and then you've got air. It's basically six o'clock hold. So we're not going to test this one because it's pointless. There's no unmarked aperture. We know exactly what this does. Problem with this is obviously you only get two apertures and for a military that has grown up with well, the SMLE rear sight is really, really fine adjustable. You can, you, you can dial that in very, very finely. Um, so we end up with the Mark III sight, which is this one. And uh, it's entirely pressed construction. Uh, the, the leaf is integral with the battle aperture, which is partly why I find the whole... Uh, it's a Mark III sight with a Mark II leaf. Official explanation slightly... Uh, uh, dis not, well, distasteful is not really the word, it's um, unsatisfying I think. Um, so for elevation adjustment you've got this sticky out lever here that you press in and it will sit on notches between 200 and 1300. Does this one have halves? Yeah and there's some halves in there as well in uh, at least the higher elevations where you, you really need it more. Um, this is significantly narrower, so we have a little bushing that goes there, like that, see that? So I will pop this one off and pop this one off, and I've never shot with one of these before, so it will be a first for me too. Moments later. So, same deal again, there's going to be a lot of repetition today, I've got, I've got all day luckily. Um, there is no way to have it just below 200, have it sort of three clicks equivalent below 200. So what I think what we'll do is I will shoot it on 200 and then we'll see whether it hits above or below. It's 
make sure it's engaged because literally it's just spring tension here that holds it. So the, the reference point is actually, the reference surface is on the left side of the site. Never used one of these before, literally the first time. Oh, and it's, a, it's worth pointing, it's worth pointing out that uh, sites were replaced, were upgraded with better ones uh, whenever possible in service. So if an armorer got a load of these delivered and had a load of rifles with these, he'd try and swap them across if possible. And uh, people did try and upgrade them to these in post-war. A lot of rifles were upgraded to these, which is why they're some of the most common rifles on the market. Because um, these are by far the best sights in the series. So let's see where these go. Well, 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 well. Another one falling very, very low. Okay, well, I'm gonna whack that up to 400 and try again. Yep, there we go, that's clear. That is same point of impact, close enough for government work. Well, like maybe a minute of angle in it. That really doesn't matter on a service rifle. Um, that's interesting. So, onwards and upwards with the next one. Right, so the immediate problem with these, the Mark III sight with Mark II leaf, uh, is that that lever sticks out a lot on the side and gets caught on stuff and breaks. So the solution, which gives us the Mark IV sight with Mark III leaf, um, is to curve the lever. And I've got two of these, one with a big, and one with a small battle aperture. And this displeases me because there is no difference I can find between a Mark II leaf and a Mark III leaf, aside from the side which the stop pin comes out of, because on these it comes out the right, and on these it comes out the left, but I have in my collection one the wrong way round. Um, this, is, this is why the official explanation just displeases me immensely. But this is surprisingly solid on here. I mean, the, the, the big spring and the plunger really do help. So let us pop this across. I'm going to not bother doing that. You've seen that enough now. You've seen the shooting now. I'm going to set it to 400 first and see. And I'll do it with the small aperture first. Now, interestingly, this one doesn't want to quite index at exactly 400. This seems to be have a little bit of slop in it. It will index perfectly at five where the uh, the mark is on the side that's serving as reference, but there's a fair amount of slop in this one. Mm. So it sits here, that might end up being about 350, but we'll see. Okay, with that set to where it wanted to sit, which is a little bit below 400, um, it's dropping a little bit low, mean point of impact there to there. Engineering guesstimation rule of thumb. Do, 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 about that now uh, four and a bit centimeters um, two and a bit mower yeah if that would actually if that site would actually sit at 400 that would be 400 I don't think we need to do that again 500 I think is gonna sit it up there somewhere um, yeah I don't have another small aperture one of those to test unfortunately but um, yeah right so this Mark IV with Mark III leaf with a big battle aperture will actually sit comfortably in its 400 notch, so let's try it 400. Well, there we go. Well, that's a nice group on the right there. Um, but that difference is half an inch, if that, about a minute of angle. Um, yeah, that one is definitively set at 400. That one, by the way, is a Fazakali. So the major problem that's common to both the Mark III and the Mark IV pressed sights, as in the ones marked Mark II and Mark III, and I even wrote it wrong on one of the cards as a result, um, is that the battle aperture is really, really susceptible to damage. So even having cured the, uh, the catching issue with the Mark III lever by curving it, um, there is still the fact that that will bend quite a lot, and I've got a few that are bent one way or the other. All it has to do is hook on something. So, well, it seems to be the Canadians came up with this, is the C Mark IV, and they're marked either C Mark 
three, of course, or just mark three. Like that one. Um, most of the ones I've got are uh, marked well, A in a big C, so they're presumably Long Branch, although I do have a BSA and a Fazakali as well, so it seems that these were in fact made uh, in the UK as well. And what they did was they have a machined base, so the base is very much like the Mark 1, milled rear sight, but then the leaf is still pressed and is brazed onto it and uh, it might just be the case that there were some uh, BSA or Fazakali leaves off, off of these that were then cut up and used or maybe they produced a full, uh, full sites of this type, I don't actually know. Although most of the production seems to be Canadian whether it's marked Mark Roman numerals 3 or C Mark Arabic 3. So uh, this particular one I've got on here is marked up Mark Roman 3, it will sit at 400. This is a small aperture and we shall give it a go. Interesting, so that came out a little lower. Um, the tune of about two and a half mower again. Uh, let's just... Do, 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 do. What are we on there? Well, three centimeters at 50 meters is gonna be about two mower. So, uh, I mean, not the end of the end of the world, but that's 400 plus two more, roughly. Okay, last of the uh, pressed ones with solid bases here. C Mark IV, Mark C Mark III, large aperture. Well, that one clicks in nice and positively at 400, and absolutely clear that that is uh, 400 yards for the battle site. Okay, number five rear sight now. These are always with a large aperture. There is actually a uh, pressed Mark II rear sight for them. They call Mark II because there isn't a, a, a two position flip, uh, but they're extremely rare. They occasionally turn up on eBay for quite a lot of money. Uh, this one is actually made by Singer. Uh, people calling them a Singer site, that's a collector misnomer. Singer made some, Singer didn't design them. They come from the uh, number one Mark VI trials by Enfield rather earlier when Singer was making sewing machines. So, we shall do the same thing, we shall set it to 400 and see how it goes. Right, as expected with the battle site, they dropped lower than with the number fours, which were all clustered around there. And with 400 on the rear site, it's way up there. Um, so we shall, for completeness, wind this down to 100 and uh, do it again. But uh, that's quite clear that that battle site is not set for 400. Okay, so down to 100, which is 200 minus 3, roughly. And I uh, forgot to mention, uh, the, the manufacturer code for Singer is N67. It was in Scotland, so N for North, 67. So you see a part with N67 on it? It was made by Singer, who actually uh, had to be nationalised by the British government at the start of the war because the, uh, the US was neutral and didn't want to make stain guns and stuff. So according to Peter Laidler's Stengun book, but then he's in prison right now, so maybe we should take that with a pinch of salt. I don't know. That's my only source on that. Well, that's pretty conclusive with the number five rear sight. That's the five with the battle sight. That's five shot at 100. Um, yeah, what's interesting though is that these are rather further to the left at the point of impact, but that's something I will quantify up, although maybe won't be able to do for the number five, because I've been quite careful to put the target always at the same point. Um, but what I think I'm going to do now is mark those and then reuse this target to do the other number four rear sight, which appears to be an Enfield one. There's no marking on the front, but there's a part on the back marked Enfield. So uh, let's redo that one. Okay, so this one is a large rear aperture again probably Enfield, it actually bottoms out at 200. We can't actually wind it down any lower. So this is the last one for today. I know it's uh, I've done quite a lot of shooting. My eyes are getting slightly tired, which might be affecting my group size. But uh, anyway, on the last stretch. Ha ha! All right, so we have our battle side group there and our 200 group there. 
I think this one's going to be 400 again. Let's uh, wind it up and have a go. Well, there we go. That one is definitely at 400 again. So, let's take this down and have a look at the overall spread. And I wasn't actually quite as careful with the uh, placement down the bottom. I was careful hanging it set center there, but sometimes it will have hung at an angle. So those are the number five ones I marked. That was something that went higher. So the overall group with all of the sites put together, that's all the battle sites except the number five, go into there. And then that is uh, most of them set at 400. And that I think is really very interesting. That's the group for 100. So within reasonable tolerances, and bearing in mind that most of these are pieces of pressed steel cack, um, that's not bad for the manufacturing tolerances of the day. I mean, you could fairly confidently whip one site off, whip another one on, and know that you're not gonna be more than um, a minute or two of angle off of where you should be. And in fact, most soldiers would not notice that difference anyway because they weren't grouping uh, well enough to really see it properly. So, yeah, right, let's go back up to the Schurzen house and have a look at the cards. So as you can see, and as you could see from, uh, from the printing on the target frame, they're actually coming out pretty, pretty close. And as I mentioned right at the start, even the, uh, the Fazakali site with the, with the battle site set at 100, because the ladder was different, um, that prints in more or less the same place. It's, it's actually quite impressive for the tolerances of the, of the era. Um, but yeah, I think that's interesting. What I'm going to do is I'm going to table up all the lateral and vertical um, uh, deviations from a datum point, probably the bottom corner of the target there, because that's the same in all cases, and uh, table it up and put it online. Um, I think that's very interesting that the Fazakali site came out differently. And I've certainly shot others that have come out the same. So if you have a number four with a milled Mark I back sight, uh, I would be very grateful to receive any, um, any equivalent data. If you could basically do the same thing, you do it with 303, it doesn't have to be with a 22, um, just so that we can get a, a sort of survey of how many were set at 100 like this because all the others are set at 400, which I find very, very interesting. Um, so, yeah, if you could sort of take photos of the site showing the markings and do this exercise, basically try it against the battle site with the, uh, with the ladder at 100 or 200 if it won't go quite that low, and 400, and we'll see if we can generate some interesting data. So I hope that was at least vaguely interesting, and if you want to contribute to this research, and I think it's going to be ongoing, I've got at least one other number four rear sight uh, that I can check, and I've got a number five one as well that's currently on Frankenrifle that I can also check against, uh, against this, but I, I, I suspect that all of the number five rear sights will be exactly the same. Um, I'm best contacted via the Facebook page or via Patreon, and uh, yeah, we'll gladly receive all your data and we'll table it up and try and make something of it. So. If you survived this far, thank you very much for watching. This has taken me all morning. It's really, it's a, this is a lot of work and I do it minimalistically and as efficiently as possible, but uh, I am uh, quite a cream cracker right now. So thank you all for watching. Thank you very much for patrons who keep uh, inspiring me to keep producing this sort of stuff and nonsense for you and see you again. Bye.